Today I want to talk about matrices. Wait, no, I mean Pokemon. Specifically, Pokemon battling. We'll get to the scary matrix things later. Anyways, in battling you select moves that do damage. The amount of damage you deal is linked to this complicated looking formula. For our purposes, I want to look at this primary part as the rest are a bunch of modifiers that are more commonly talked about. So we have four things to worry about. Level, power, and A and D, which stand for attack and defense. For these values we need to look at the moves used. Each move has its own base power, and the other two factors are multipliers depending on the level of the attacker and the ratio of the attack and opposing defense stats. From here, there are two types of damaging attacks, special and physical. This move type indicates whether the Pokemon attacks and defends with their regular attack and defense, or their special attack and special defense. Alright, that should be everything you need to know, so now that I'm in battle, let's quickly calculate the damage. I'm level 5 with 10 attack, using an attack with 50 power. Sweet, now I just need their defense, huh? How do I calculate their defense? This begs the question, where do the attack and defense stat numbers even come from? And with that, there are four new factors to consider. Base stats depending on the Pokemon, individual values or IVs that are random from 0 to 31, effort values or EVs that can range from 0 to 255, and nature. Now we again have some formulas to calculate each stat. At first glance, these look rather unfriendly, and needing to do this for every stat, it looks kind of daunting. This is where we can introduce matrices. For now, they will just help with storing data as we move along. Oh yeah, if you don't know what matrices or vectors are, just let matrices be an array full of numbers, and vectors be a matrix that is a single column. It's a bit of an oversimplification, but it's all they are without any kind of fancy math added. Alright, so to build such a matrix, we effectively make a table. We can list each type of stats in columns, so base stats get a column, IVs, and EVs get the same thing, and we'll just ignore nature as we can deal with that afterwards. With this organization out of the way, we can now look to understand how matrix multiplication works. The first thing to do is to make sure that the dimensions are compatible. If you have an m by n matrix, you have to multiply it by an n by r matrix. The result is an m by r matrix, so as a rule of thumb, make sure the middle numbers are the same for compatibility, and then remove them for the resulting dimensions. Then, to multiply, you take a row of the matrix and the column vector, and sum the product of components. First entry times first entry added to the second times the second summed all the way to the last entry by last entry and put that in the corresponding row and column of the result matrix. A good way to organize it is to set the starting matrices left and up from the product so the resulting values line up with the row and column it comes from. Okay, at first glance this seems unhelpful and dubious, but this will work out quite nice for us. To see why, let's go back to our matrix of Pokemon stats and the formula. For our stats, we want to multiply the base by 2, add the IVs, and then the EVs divided by 4. Afterwards, we multiply by level over 100, which is simply a scaling factor. But we can deal with that afterwards. What we can now do with these three stats is use matrix multiplication to help with this step in the process. If we put these three modifiers into a vector, we find that the result of matrix vector multiplication will send each row to the output 2 times the base stats plus IVs plus EVs divided by 4. And well, that's all there is to it. We can toss in the scaling factor on top of it, add the 5, multiply by nature, do everything else the formula wants to do, and there's nothing particularly special about using matrix multiplication in this small step. It's just perfectly designed to do this specific task where we want to calculate a more general value depending on some underlying linear factors. And if you're not familiar with linear algebra, this is probably one of the simplest ways to understand why we have the matrix multiplication we have. It allows us to take our table of values and condense it along the rows while accounting for how many times we want to add it. All things considered though, why bother using matrix multiplication for this small step within a larger formula about calculating damage for a silly kids game I still play? I mean, I haven't told you about all the other parts of the formula, or even discussed if this matrix multiplication is even worth it. And those are good questions to ask. I don't want to pretend there's a special magic to math that lets it apply to anything or everything because there isn't. Math is a tool we've designed, often oriented for a specific purpose. But in my eyes, math isn't just about the beautiful theorems. Instead, it's about finding it in the little things in life. The small steps which have a goal that you just have the right math tool to solve. And for me, that's what I find to be the magic in math.